Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for staying within the time. Um, I now, un under Committee Rule 9, we will now question witnesses under the five-minute rule. I will start by asking uh, questions. Mr. Secretary, as I read through your statement, I saw only a passing reference to the restart of loan payments. You said the department was requesting $2.65 billion to administer FSA programs, quote, to support students and student loan borrowers as they navigate the financial aid application and student loan repayment processes. I and subcommittee chairman Owens wrote you on April 25th asking 12 questions about the readiness of the department and FSA for the restart. We've not received any answers. And last week in your testimony before the Senate Appropriations Committee, you said the department is preparing to restart federal student loan payments. <clears throat> Will you commit to no more extensions of the pay repayment pause? Thank you, Chairwoman Fox. Uh, as you know, the one-time targeted debt relief uh, plan that uh, President Biden proposed will provide up to 43 million Americans with some much needed relief, but we recognize that uh, the loan payment will be restarting. And as we said in the past, the Supreme Court decision, which we're eagerly awaiting, we feel positive that it's going to be uh, a positive outcome. And you uh, know I'm under a time constraint, so yes. I'd like you to get real specific, mm -hmm. okay? So are you going to pause anymore the repayment? We uh, communicated that after the Supreme Court decision is made, uh, loan repayments will start within 60 days of the okay. decision. So what are the specific interim and final action steps you've advised loan servicers to take in preparation for the restart? We are in communication regularly with loan servicers, and we recognize that part of the success of the repayment plan will be uh, based on how our borrowers receive information in a timely way, in a clear way, and we've engaged with our uh, servicers to ensure that so that's the expectation. So how many written communications explaining the details of the restart has the department had with loan servicers from January of this year to the present? Sure, my team is uh, engaging with yours to provide that information and we'll, we'll make sure that that information gets to you in a responsive have, way. Have either you or Mr. Cordray spoken directly with the loan servicers about the restart any time during the period January 2023 through the present? Uh, as I said, the information that you requested will be provided and it will answer uh, who from the department has communicated. And, and will that include sufficient information about sufficient compensation for the student loan servicers to have the capacity to return to repayment? Will you include that? I will uh, ensure that my team has this information uh, that you're requesting. And uh, while I don't have the information in front of me now, I'll tell you that we'll continue to act in okay. good faith to be responsive. Is, isn't it true you've cut the service levels provided by servicers and the funding they receive by amending their current contracts, while at the same time you've extended those contracts during, through December 2024? Is that true? Chairwoman Fox, part of the request that we have here is to provide sufficient funding to make sure that we can provide good service to our borrowers. Uh, and we feel that this budget reflects our attempt to make sure that we're providing good service to our borrowers through their servicers. Mr. Secretary, um, this act of Congress that established the Department of Education included the finding that, quote, parents have the primary responsibility for the education of their children, and states and localities and private institutions have the primary responsibility for supporting that parental role. You agree, don't you, that teachers, administrators, and school boards should defer to parents as the primary teachers of their children and teachers, administrators, and school boards should support parents, not undercut them and work against them. Is that correct? You know, as a former school principal, I would, I would always tell parents at graduations, you are the first and most influential teachers. I, I say we play a supporting cast, and the schools that are most effective are those that honor and engage parents in a meaningful way. Okay. On a related point, I note that a report released in March of this year by the Defense of Freedom Institute found that eight of the nation's 20 largest school districts allow students to use names and pronouns at school aligned with their gender identity without parental knowledge and consent. Yet some of these same districts included New York City Department of Education, LA Unified School District, Chicago Public Schools require parental permission to dispense over-the-counter medications. 
Mr. Secretary, you agree, don't you, that school districts that allow students to use names and pronouns in school align with their gender identity without parent parental knowledge and consent undercuts parents? As I said before, uh, Chairwoman, it's critical that uh, schools and parents are, are engaged together in supporting children, and decisions like that are made at the local level. The federal government doesn't have a role in that. Thank, Thank you. you again, Mr. Secretary. I now recognize the 